Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here, and today we'll be going through and reviewing Scent OS 8. We'll first explore its contents and everything that it has to offer with its default desktop environment, and then I'll go ahead and give it some ratings. Also, if you're new and stopping by to watch a review today, please take a moment to subscribe below and hit the notification bell for more reviews. I started going through things here, and my first impressions are that it has the look and feel of Ubuntu and Debian since it uses the GNOME desktop environment as its default desktop environment. The desktop is very minimal, it's non-cluttered as you can see, and the background is of a dark tone using the default wallpaper. I think it's a little bit too dark so first thing I'll do is go ahead and change the background. You can do that by simply right clicking on the background and hitting change background. And we'll just look through what wallpapers they have available for us, standard. Let's, no pictures, huh. colors, we'll just choose the standard background in a different color. Maybe something that pops a little more, easier to see things in the background that way. At least in my opinion. Uh, also, when you're changing the background, you do have more settings options. It actually takes you to settings when you hit change background, so you can get to that in two ways. Uh, you also have access here to uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, the notifications, search, uh, languages, universal access, and so on and so forth. Power is fairly important. Tells you what the current uh, battery power if you have a laptop and uh, some of the power saving options that you can use and whether or not to turn on or off the automatic suspension of the system. This one's a little important because some systems don't fare well with the automatic suspension. If you do have it set on, occasionally your computer may get stuck in a state where it won't turn back on. Just a fair warning to some users. Uh, then you have your networking setup, which is how you set up a VPN or proxy. And it tells you what you're currently, what speed you're currently connected at or linked at. So we actually just received a new update of CentOS and Set, which is CentOS 8, and they have announced a new rolling release called CentOS Steam, and now they will be allowing the community to make more frequent up. So that's something exciting to look forward to. Now that the updates can come more frequently and will be released to the public with CentOS Steam. This is a pretty big step for CentOS since they haven't ever offered this option before. So uh, a couple other things, if you hit activities here in the upper left, you'll see that uh, I actually installed the workstation for CentOS. You can also install the server edition, which comes with many different options for servers, tools, utilities, what have you. Um, so with the workstation, at least, you get a few standard applications that you might not get with server edition. Of course, you can add these on always and even potentially select them from the installer when you're installing. But uh, you have a default web browser, which is Firefox. Evolution is the mail client. Rhythmbox for music. Files, um, of course, is the file browser. Software, which is their software store. Help for various topics about CentOS. And terminal, so you can issue commands. I'll check out the files first here. So in files, it really does look similar to all the other Linux distributions as well as Windows. It looks very familiar to Windows as well here. If you go through and uh, click on one of them, you will change paths, of course, and up here you can tell what current path that you're in. So you're in the home directory under the downloads folder. You can hit the back button if you want to go back one directory. And uh, there's also the search option. So if you want to search within a directory, you can do that by hitting this button here, a little magnifying glass, as well as select certain options like selecting the dates and searching for specific types of files. And you can also search for only file names versus the full text, meaning inside the files as well. Next thing is you can change between views here if you want to look at it uh, in list view versus a larger icon view. And then more options if you want to sort between your files. You can do it in various types of ways as well as increase the size 
of your icons, 133% seems to be the maximum. You can reset zoom by hitting hitting the current magnification and if and if you go over the zoom you can just click on it and it'll go right back. Uh, other things, you can show hidden files if that pertains to something you're looking for or reload and add bookmarks and new tabs as well. Uh, then we will continue on and exit out of here. I think we've done enough investigation in our file browser. If we go to terminal, we'll start a new terminal window and just some more information on CentOS. It's uh, really great because it helps meet the needs of organizations as well as individual users. So I do enjoy using this distribution more than some other ones because it's a enterprise software with many different packages, tools, and server installs that you can select from when you're installing the base system. It's also based off of Red Hat Enterprise Linux, or for short, R-H-E-L, and it focuses on stability instead of being on the cutting edge of updates. Although, now that they've uh, released that new Steam version, you'll, you'll get more rolling releases if you want to be on the cutting edge. So it's got a really good blend of everything. Looking at the terminal, everything seems to be in a darker color with the text being white, which really helps it stand out from the background. I do enjoy how minimal it looks. No, There's not a bunch of colors fighting each other on the terminal. Some distributions go a little bit too far with that. Uh, let's see if we just log in as a, a super user here. And once we're logged in, so as you notice, everything just remains uh, white. The user doesn't change because it's root. Uh, the host name stays the same. And something I'm interested in is uh, whether or not you can actually put something on the uh, desktop here. So let's just navigate to the desktop. And inside the desktop, you can see there's nothing here. I just went ahead and listed out everything on there. What we'll do is let's go ahead and create a new file. So we're just going to call it file.cpp, why not? And in here, I'm just going to put something, test, just a little bit of text, write that file. And as you can see, it did not show up in the background here. So you really don't have files in the background. I guess uh, that helps with making it uncluttered. But sometimes I, I like being able to see the actual file on the desktop. So. It's interesting that you cannot see it and you cannot drag and drop it onto the desktop. Let's just try logging out with root and make sure that it's not user specific. So I'll go ahead and navigate back to desktop and I see file CPP here, but we'll make another one. Uh, VI file to CPP and test in here. And once I exit out, you can see that we have two files now one has super privileges, the other one doesn't, but again, it's not in the background here. So other things that you can install, and I'll supply a list of these in the description below. Right out the bat with the basis, you can install web servers, FTP servers, SSH servers, and many other servers that help you pretty much deploy a server as soon as you get the base system set up. It's really nice. Most distributions don't give you that ability. And with all that being said, it makes it really great for the IT world because you can deploy and manage your servers very easily without having to worry too much about massive changes between updates. Since those updates occur less frequently with the focus of this distribution being on stability first. And the admin tools are great and also can be chosen to be installed with the base system. I think we've covered most things here. You got the clock and the day here in the middle, top top middle. And then on the right hand side, just a few more options, your wired connection currently, as well as the remaining battery life, who's logged in. And then you can go to your settings, uh, log in and out and restart or shut down the workstation here, as well as if you right click again, we already use change background, but you can change your display settings. So resolution settings and stuff like that uh, by hitting displays, as you can tell in here, you also have a few devices on the left hand side. Uh, and then if we exit out and then if we hit settings, it's actually the same thing as display settings. So it's 
kind of pointless to have the two, but they do anyway. And it actually defaults you to the displays anyway. So they should, could have just named it display settings or settings and it would have been just fine. So I'll go ahead and give it some ratings at this point. Since CentOS is fairly popular, or at least most have heard about it in the uh, server space, and it offers a blend between a normal workstation as well as a nice enterprise as well as a nice enterprise platform, I'll give it a popularity rating of 8 out of 10. It's simple to use since there's not a lot of clutter, and it seems to focus on keeping the learning curve to a minimal when transferring from another operating system. Although you can install other desktop environments, it doesn't deploy some of the more friendly environments for people who are coming over from Windows or Mac, giving it a user friendliness rating of 7 out of 10. CentOS is very stable and doesn't focus on raw performance gains, but does give you many options to customize your base system. It also releases updates less frequently to keep the system stable, excluding the new stream version. I'll give it a performance rating of 7 out of 10. This distribution is based off of RHEL and comes with all sorts of different setups that the user can select from while running the installer. And it also offers many utilities, tools, and servers, so it gets a features rating of 9 out of 10. Finally, it seems like it has a fair-sized technical community supporting the distribution, which stands out on its own and has been around for quite a while now and doesn't seem to be going away anytime soon. So it's getting a sustainability rating of 9 out of 10. That gives it an overall score of 40 out of 50. I hope you enjoyed the review and walkthrough of CentOS 8. Let me know if you think the rating system is fair, and if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos, and make sure to like the video. Thanks for watching.